Hello, very good morning to all. I'm Kelvin here again. Welcome to today's Daily Dose of Market Insights. Very good morning. Today will be Thursday, the 17th of October, 2024. So as usual, before we jump straight into the gist of today's Daily Dose, let's have a quick look at the disclaimer first. All right. Leverage trading carries a high degree of risk and may not be suitable for everyone. Losses can exit deposits. This presentation is not an offer or solicitation to buy or sell, nor financial advice or recommendation for any investment product, as well as any forecast prediction or projection in this presentation is not necessarily indicative of the future or likely performance of the product. This advertisement has not been reviewed by the Monitor Authority, Authority of Singapore. Okay, so let us first start off with what has taken shape yesterday during the European session, the US session, and as well as today's early Asia session in terms of news flow, economic data release, and their respective impact on the various uh, cross asset classes. So let us start with yesterday's during the European session first. So yesterday during the European session, there was this uh, important data pertaining to the sterling pound or the pound sterling. Uh, which is the UK, UK, give me that, the UK inflation rate. All right. So uh, hopefully you can, you guys can see my screen. Okay. So I think everything's okay. All right. Good. So yesterday, uh, the this release of this uh, UK inflation data it actually came in weaker than expected. So you look at the headline inflation rate, which is including energy and food continue to decelerate to 1.7% year on year. So that's actually uh, below a Bank of England target of 2%. And in fact, that is a kind of a universal uh, target being kind of um, imposed by most uh, major central bank having inflation uh, hovering below 2% or desired around that 2% level is something pretty much optimal to prevent them of keeping rates at a very high level. So more or less uh, UK, Central Bank has really fulfilled the mandate of controlling inflation rate after one and a half year of keeping rates rather high. And do not forget the Bank of England only cut once, right? It only cut once uh, compared to the ECB and the other major central bank who has cut a several, at, at, uh, several times this year. So if you look at the market is expecting market is expecting 1.9% and if you exclude the fresh food and energy or food and energy price the core inflation also came down as well so uh, most of the market participants will be looking at core inflation because it strip off the energy and food prices which tends to be much more erratic but that also going to continue to show signs of deceleration so previously it was at 3.6% year on year in the month of August August. So it went down to 3.2% year on year in September, uh, two basis point lower than what market is expecting at 3.4%. So if you look at the trend of the core inflation over here, okay, hopefully it shows up. It seems to me that the system's a bit lagging today. Okay, please do not hang my system. All right. Okay, good. Finally, it appears. Okay, so what you could see over here is that since, okay, let's go to the three year trend. Huh? Okay, since hitting the high of 7.1% year on year in May 2023, so that's close to about uh, one, one, one year and four, one year and four months ago. So it continues to be on the path of deceleration. All right. So it printed 3.2% year on year in September. So that is actually the lowest figure since September 2021. So if you look at the five year trend, right over here, very clearly deceleration. Okay. So that actually kind of potentially cemented Bank of England will very lightly cut another 25 basis point when they meet next month, right? More or less, it's already a done deal. So that has already been priced into the market. Market is really looking ahead. So what you could see over here is that, yes, yesterday the sterling pound actually came down and kind of test that uh, 130 figure level. But during the US session and right after the news of this, uh, uh, we call it news release or data release, the pound actually fought 
fought back up to trade above 130, uh, 130.10, 1 1.3010. Then thereafter, slipping back down again to actually test around the 12980 uh, level before inching back up uh, right now in Asia session at around 12995. So that I'll cover more on the short term technical outlook. What are the key levels to look out for? But it seems to us that yesterday's uh, this particular news flow, which is very, very, very uh, kind of a encouraging sign to state that the inflation trend in UK has started to decelerate and previously two months ago Bank of England tends to be much more cautious in terms of enacting their interest rate cut cycle because they're trying to urge towards the cautious side that's saying that inflation might research, research in the UK economy again but the odds of doing of happening inflation resurgence back seems to be pretty much remote right now so that could actually prompt Bank of England to be much more aggressive or adventurous in igniting their current interest rate cut cycle so previously they decided to cut pause and wait for what and see so now perhaps we may start to see a, a round of successful successive interest rate cut like what uh, ECB is trying to embark right now okay but however in the short term we may start to see a bit of bounces here and there in terms of the uh, sterling dollar rate later I'll share we are doing the short term uh, technical outlook but on a bigger bigger picture over here we do see much more uh, fundamental signs fundamental signs fundamental uh, data that potentially support a weaker sterling against the dollar going forward so that's a very long term perspective so i'm talking about multi month perspective all right so now let us now uh, look at other data flow that has actually taken shape this morning which will be the australia employment rate data and bear in mind that uh, i want to stress that australia is only the major central bank that hasn't cut interest rate okay japan is a outlayer japan is a different story right it's a different animal so among all the central banks the developed nation central banks from europe us uh, canada swiss australia is the only central bank that hasn't cut interest rate because of certain parts of the economy are still pretty much rosy and the Australia RBA officials are very very cautious about the tightening of the labor market that could potentially lead to a firmer inflation uh, uh, we call it a uh, inflation rate if they were actually cut interest rate at this juncture and it may start to see a resurgence in especially services inflation data so if you look at today's uh, release of RBA or Australia labor market data, the latest one for the month of September, unemployment change similar to the NFP, uh, very similar to US NFP, rose much more than expected. Previously, it was at 42.6K. Right now, it jumped out all the way up to 61.K job added. So that was way above market expecting of 25K way above okay so that actually explained to us the australia dollar actually jumped up this morning it actually rose this morning over here during a very intraday basis uh back above the 67 uh level so but however it can't break above the 67 level the aussie against dollar why because there are actually other macro factor at play which is pertaining to the chinese economy so right now there's this uh, a very very uh, interesting intermarket play at site that is related to the Australia dollar. Yes, we know that Australia RBA is pretty much of a cautious mode over here. They didn't cut interest rate, but however, the Aussie dollar is being used as a risk sensitive or risk off risk risk on risk off proxy that is related to the health of the Chinese economy. Because why the reason is that Australia raw materials, which is iron ore, industrial metals, they have a significant huge market that's been catered to the Chinese economy due to uh, this this trade uh, relationship. So if the Chinese economy does pretty well, China will start to import more Australia iron or, or industrial metal. So that could actually give a boost to the Aussie dollar. But however, if the Chinese economy doesn't do well, 
they do not require much more iron ore from Australia. So that could actually put pressure on the Aussie dollar. And we know that recently there's this optimism that market participant has not started to place into the Chinese stock policy maker to negate this ongoing deflationary risk spiral that is playing out in the Chinese economy by three weeks ago by doing lots of positive rhetoric that they will do their best to stop this deflationary risk spiral that is very much pertaining to very weak housing market that translate to very very weak consumer sentiment and that translate to very weak business sentiment as well so market participant now wants to see or to hear that promise fresh stimulus measure that has been highly anticipated out from china but until now there is nothing that's being said about what is the exact amount of fresh stimulus fresh or not old stimulus that going to be released from china and right now as we are speaking there is one particular uh, china related micro uh, micro data flow over here that is this uh, live briefing by the china housing ministry okay so this particular uh, as we are speaking right now is still live uh, right so it's just basically same thing uh, is a lot of rhetoric going on so is to widen the credit support under the whitelist program to 4 trillion yen so that's actually positive uh, but so far the market reaction over here is pretty much uh, muted the uh, shares of Chinese developers slide as breathing uh, under whips so what I could see over here is that all this particular news uh, is nothing really really uh, that new at, 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 at all so let me see what's the new update over here okay so uh, overall what this is that the scale of the easing still looks rather modest all right so there is no kind of a very very uh, big bang that this uh, a briefing news by this uh, China housing ministry could, could, that never trigger a positive feedback loop into the China stock market. So if you look at the China stock market right now, in fact, it's actually trading rather muted. Uh, okay, rather muted over here. So the CSI 300 is almost unchanged uh, at 0.19%. And this is the CSI real estate market actually down negative uh, 4%. So market uh, doesn't actually uh, kind of create a positive feedback loop that is uh, that is uh, uh, playing out right now as this particular uh, live briefing takes shape by the housing ministry so basically so far whatever news that is being played out right now is doesn't really really uh, not like a big bang news positively so market has already uh, wanting more measures coming out from here but so far there is no uh, kind of a fresh stimulus amount that is being uh, played out based on the, this series of China uh, rivers China ministry a live briefing that they actually held in the last week and today will be the housing ministry briefing so that actually also causes the Aussie dollar uh, to be remains rather muted despite that push up that we see so far in the uh, uh, Aussie dollar back towards the 67 figure level but uh, it can't actually do a breakthrough at the 67 level figure uh, right now so if you look at the Aussie dollar right now over here okay, it, it still it still can't break through at the 67 figure mark uh, right now and start, now in fact it starts to retrace so later I'll talk more about this Aussie dollar when we go into that short-term intraday technical outlook so net net overall uh, the key thing about Aussie dollar over here is that yes we need to pay attention to the economy which is the you know those uh, key metrics that's coming up from Australia the labor data the inflation rate but however we still need to take into account of the state of the Chinese economy as well especially pertaining to the anticipation and how the market react the policy making process of the China top policy maker so so far right now what we see is purely rhetoric there is no clear signs of what is the fresh new stimulus that could have come up from the China policy making body there's no clear uh, stimulus market is pensioning about four 
two trillion to four trillion, but nothing concrete came out of that yet. So that's fresh stimulus, uh, not has really been earmarked in the past. So until that particular stimulus measure from the China top policymaker confirmed, I mean this that this is the extra stimulus, fresh stimulus that the China top policymaker approved, and where this stimulus will go. All right, until that happened, that from now is purely rhetoric. So I think that's rhetoric over here potentially may not see a substantial uh, push up in the Aussie dollar. Okay, so this I'm trying to express. Now back to ECB for today. So we know that ECB for today, okay, is actually expecting a 25 basis point cut. So a uh, rate 25 basis point cut is being more as fully priced in today. And market now looking at another 25 basis point cut in the October and December meeting because of the very weak eurozone economic data that has been built so far based on the manufacturing PMI and services PMI and inflation rate or inflation trend in eurozone continues to decelerate. So what market will want to pay attention to over here is during the latest guardians coming out from the press conference one hour about about 45 minutes later from the ECB decision where press will try to quiz ECB Governor Lagarde on what's her take now going forward in terms of the state of the inflationary trend and economic growth trend in Eurozone and they try to actually uh, uh, try to game or try to actually uh, anticipate how strongly will ECB go in terms of their next interest rate cut in October and December because right now market has already priced it a 25 basis point, another 25 basis point cut in October and December. So if ECB Lagarde continues to play a kind of a poker face, that means she don't give a very clear indication of where ECB will go in October or December, that means there's no 100% uh, uh, concrete, uh, we call it uh, evidence from them that saying that they will die die cut in October or December, that could potentially see an, a spike up in the Euro dollar, at least on the intraday basis, because market participant now has really priced in a rather dovish ECB going forward ahead of today's ECB meeting. All right, this is something I want to share with you all. So with that, that actually sum up the uh, so-called the current latest news flow economic data and how they are impact on their respective asset classes. Okay, now with that, there's one particular fundamental data I want to share with you all that is more pertaining to the US uh, stock market. So before I jump on that fundamental uh, data and intermarket dynamics that's pertaining to the US stock market, let me share with you all the performance of the US stock market yesterday. So the performance of US stock market yesterday was actually uh, kind of within our expectation as well. Still recall that yesterday in our short term intraday technical outlook, yes, prior day on a uh, uh, Tuesday during the US session, all the major US stock indices so off, but they actually uh, held right exactly at the key support level. And thereafter Wednesday, US session, all these uh, major data actually bounced from their key support level. So the SPX managed to gain 0.47%. The NASDAQ tested the support at around the 20,150 level, 20,000K level, but managed to survive, but so far managed to actually close almost unchanged and the Dow Jones and the Russell 2000 outperformed by 0.79% and the Russell 2000 up 1.64%. So the reason why we see this outperformance of the Russell 2000, especially and also the Dow Jones, is due to this Trump trade narrative coming back into the picture after uh, Trump uh, so-called Tuesday uh, live uh, the previous, you know, the, on, 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 on Tuesday, we do have this uh, Trump interview between uh, Bloomberg News and himself organized by the Economic Club of Chicago. And after that interview, we start to see uh, Trump's odds, betting odds by the, uh, as dictated by the market, betting markets have a lead over Harris. So if you look at these odds right now, uh, based on poly market, which is live, Okay, let me very quickly go into it. Okay, so this is the live one over here. Okay, give it some time to load. I think it's, uh, it's a bit slow right now due to the connection. 
Okay, so if you were to look at this this odds right now by poly market, uh, Trump is actually uh, widening the lead. Okay, over here, if you could go into one month. Okay, so you bring up back there. Trump is actually widening the lead. So now Trump is leading by 58.5% uh, odds, whereas Harris is at 41.3. Okay, and the lead starts to get wider. All right, after that so-called um, uh, 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 live in-person in interview uh, being conducted by Bloomberg News with Trump on Tuesday. So we know that Trump policy actually favored deregulation and as well as corporate tax cut so that could potentially benefit companies and also potentially uh, also we may see a spurt up in the u.s economy due to this uh, corporate tax cut at least in a very short term basis then that could actually uh, 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 boost the russell 2000 why because the russell 2000 component stocks of or the Russell 2000 companies actually derive their revenue close to 80% to 90% from the US economy rather than globally, all right, globally over here. And that also could potentially uh, impact the NASDAQ 100 as well. Why? Because due to this risk of these uh, trade tariffs that Trump wants to actually implement with China and against the rest of the world. So that could actually potentially see a bit of a uh, rejiggering of especially the supply chain among the semiconductor supply chain as well, a rejiggering if impact and that could impact uh, that NASDAQ 100 component stock, which is primarily focusing on the mega cap technology stocks, which has much more revenue flows that are dependent on the rest of the world, world rather than the US economy. So that's why it explained to us also why the NASDAQ 100 underperformed against the rest, the Dow Jones and the Russell 2000. And also one particular fundamental factor that I want to share with you all is due to this chart over here. So we could see over here is this chart at, at the bottom is actually the ratio chart where I get the Dow Jones Industrial Average divided by the NASDAQ 100 in dark blue. And the one in lighter shade of blue is the Russell 2000 divided by the NASDAQ 100. So what you could see over here is that it has started to print a series of higher low, this ratio higher low uh, since August 2024. And its uh, major swing low was in July 2024 this year. So right now it goes to print this higher low supported by a potential Trump returning back to the White House based on the betting odds over here. And also the momentum of this ratio, these two ratio has starts to actually uh, be reduced as well. What it means that potentially uh, the Dow Jones Industrial Average and the Russell 2000 is now showing much more evidence of upperforming against the NASDAQ 100 and also be supported by the boost deepening of the U.S. Treasury yield curve as well. But I get the 10-year U.S. Treasury yield minus the two-year as they continue to inch higher and trade above a positive territory. And right now, yesterday is trading at 0 0.08, oh, sorry, 0 0.09 percent. Okay, 0 0.09 percent, and continues to actually shape a series of higher low as well in this uh, positive bull steepening of the U.S. Treasury yield curve spread by taking into account of the difference between the 10-year U.S. Treasury yield minus the two-year yield. So that is also supporting this ongoing outperformance of the Dow Jones Industrial Average and the Russell 2000 against the heavily mega cap concentrated Nasdaq 100. Okay, so in terms of performance, so in terms of the performance right now, as we head into the U.S. election, so that's about multi-week perspective, potentially based on this chart that I'm sharing with you all, and as well as the betting odds in this ongoing U.S. president election, that Trump is now having an edge over Harris, that could actually support the Dow Jones Industrial Average and the Russell 2000 outperformance against the Nasdaq 100. Right, so this is the fundamental and intermarket dynamics to share with you all that could potentially play out in the US stock market in the next three multi week perspective or so. All right, now with that, now let us now shall we jump into the short term intraday technical outlook. All right, so with that, let me expand my screen. Okay, 
to expand my screen. So now let us start with the FX market first over here looking at the euro dollar. So the euro dollar continues to be very, very weak trading below that 200 day moving average. So yesterday we do have a short term pivotal support at 1.0845. And initially there was this uh, descending uh, bullish descending wedge configuration, but price action now trade below the lower limit of that descending uh, wedge descending wedge range configuration and also below the 200 day moving average. So with that, uh, elements now are rather mixed at this juncture. So uh, I will actually have a neutrality stance on the euro dollar for today. Neutral between 1.0845 and 1.09 figure level as we head into the ECB uh, important ECB monetary policy meeting and as well as the ECB press conference later. So if price action starts to break down below 1.0845, all right, over here, even before the ECB press conference, uh, then the euro dollar potentially could uh, start to see further potential weakness to expose the next near term support level at 1.0780, 1.0750. So what's this level is that in fact this uh, minor swing low area of 1st of August and as well as a very important major support level as well if you go to the daily chart okay is in fact this ascending trend line that I drew from the low of 3rd of October 2023 so that's a year ago so all of them are pointing towards 1.0780 1.0750 level that's the next support level if 1.0845 is being taken out on the downside all right so, however, if price action managed to actually survive and goes up over here, it just to trade sideways and it breaks above 1.090. So the catalyst to break above 1.090 could potentially be a less dovish guidance coming out from the uh, ECB President Lagarde press conference where she gave no clear signs of another 25 basis point cut in October or December. And that could actually trigger a spike in the euro dollar because markets now has starts to price in a very, very dovish ECB. So a breakout with an hourly close above 1.090, then at least that could trigger a intraday mean reversion rebound scenario for the euro dollar. Next resistance level to watch out for will be 1.0950 followed by 110 figure next. So that's for the intraday technical outlook and the key levels to look out for for the euro dollar. So for now, uh, neutral, neutral stance between 1.09 and 1.0845. Okay, that's that for the euro dollar. Now, uh, sterling pound. All right, so the sterling pound has also been pretty much weak as well over here. So this sterling pound over here is now playing with the 130 figure. Then yesterday we have a low at 1.298 figure level. So uh, yes, we still have that bullish bias because there's no clear breakdown yet of that one zero. Okay, so if you look at the daily chart over here, okay, it's try to actually play around with this 130 figure level. And right now, it is actually at this gray line here. So what is this gray line? This gray line is in fact the former, this this line here, this previously 13th of July and 18th of July, 2024. This 13th July last year and 18th of July, 24. This was a descending trend line resistance. This descending trend line resistance break, tested, went up to print a higher high. And recently from the low of, from the high of uh, September, it trade all the way down. And now it's actually testing this line again, okay, as a pullback, pullback support. So there's no clear breakdown below this line over here, which is at a, at a 2.2980 level, okay, 2.2980 level. So with that, uh, I'll have a bit of excess at 2980, 2980 level, okay, as my uh, medium term pivotal support level over here, but no, a strong conviction of this uh, uh, bullish bias unless it can clear above 130.40. So that was yesterday's high. Okay, yesterday high right after the release of the very, very weak UK inflation data. So inflation data came down, a bit of whipsaw, bounce up. But thereafter, can't trade above 130.40 after during the US session yesterday. So price action right now got to very, very quickly clear above 130.50, then we could have a stronger conviction of a bullish bias coming back into the sterling dollar for it to at least expose the next near term resistance level on the intraday basis at 131.07, which confluence with the 50 day moving average, I think as a resistance level as well. 
this is 13107. So, but however, if price action starts to break down below 1.2980 with an hourly close below it, then further weakness will start to be creep, creep into the sterling dollar to expose the next near term support level at 12940 and even followed by 12860 next. Okay, which is the congestion area of 30th of July, 30th of uh, 13th of August, formerly resistance now turns into a pullback support level. All right, over here. So that's the uh, outlook for the sterling dollar. Yes, still maintain that intraday bullish bias, a bit of excess at the 1.2980 level, but conviction is low right now uh, because price action uh, can't surpass uh, 3040 during yesterday US session. And in order to increase that bullish conviction, it got very quickly clear above 130.40 with at least hourly close above it. So, all right, so now let's now turn our focus now to the Asia Pacific currency against the dollar, starting with the Aussie dollar. So I could see Aussie dollar, what we could see over here is that yes, we see a spike up this morning due to the very strong uh, uh, Australia job data, but however, the spike up can't maintain because of the rather negative reaction out from the lackluster housing ministry, China housing ministry press briefing. Okay, so this 67045, whatever 67045 is indeed a resistance level over here. So uh, I don't want to tie it so tightly, still using 6440 as my short term pivotal uh, resistance level that was yesterday's level, also convincing with a uh, Another technical element, which is the 50-day moving average, I think as a resistance level as well. So we have two technical elements that is pointing to this 6740 level. So I will still be using 6740 level graphically, the congestion area here, and as well as the 50-day moving average. So this will still remain my short-term pivotal resistance level. So as long as this level didn't surpass to the upside, we will still maintain our intraday bearish bias on the Aussie dollar. So uh, first support level to watch will be 6670 then this will be the low of of uh today's today asia session low okay 6660 okay so let's put a slash over here 60 all right a breakdown below 6660 exposes the 200 day moving average that is so convincing with this uh graphical minor swing low of 11 of september the next near term support level to watch after a breakdown below 6660 is 6635. So these are the two intraday key support level to look out for. Okay, still maintaining that intraday bearish bias. However, if price action goes up and break up above 6740, then today's intraday bearish bias will be invalidated to kickstart a mean reversion rebound scenario 6770 next and 6810 next to look out for in terms of the next resistance level on the intraday basis. That 6810 also confluence with the 20 day moving average, I think, as a support resistance level as well. Okay, so that's for the Aussie dollar. Now, turning our attention will be the dollar yen. So, uh, dollar yen yesterday we do have a 150.20 as my short term pivotal resistance level. So the RSI still remains uh, rather negative. Price bounce up, but can't break above this former ascending trend line support parallel. Now turns into a pullback resistance and price action starts to trade below it. And right now, uh, react and trade down below it as well. So uh, still no change. Uh, still using the 150.20 as my short term pivotal resistance level on the dollar yen. Still maintaining that intraday bearish bias, but price action got to break down below this uh, 14895 level. Okay, let me put it in. Okay, 95 level. Okay, a breakdown below 14895 level, at least it will increase the odds of this bearish bias to shape that minor slide to expose that next near term support level 14810 followed by 14720 all right so these are the two key levels to look out for okay three key levels to look out for on the downside on the intraday basis that means still maintaining that intraday bearish bias 15020 short term pivotal resistance price action got to break down below 14895 then after triggering that uh, or increase the odds of that intraday bearish bias with the next near-term support level to look out for will be 14810 followed by 14720. So that's for the dollar yen. However, if price action starts to push up above 15020 with an hourly close above it, then we will see this residual uh, push up to 
to towards the 150.90 level, then thereafter followed by the major resistance level of 150.150 slash 95, which is the 200 day moving average, and this dotted gray line here. So once it's dotted gray line, if you go to the daily chart over here, is that former major ascending channel support from the low of 16 of June 2023 now turns into a pullback resistance at 14150 level. Okay, this zone over here. 14150 slash 1 slash 15195. Okay, so that is the thing key levels to look out for if 15020 is being taken out on the upside if hourly close above it. Okay, so that's for the dollar yen. And now uh, one particular uh, FX cross pair that I want to share with you all will be the Euro Aussie. Still recall that Euro Aussie previously we do have a bearish bias. So this bearish bias almost hit the support level at 161.80. And now it's trying to shape a bounce of this 20 day moving average as well. So it's more like trading within this kind of range configuration on the intraday basis. So now it's at the bottom of the range and also trading above that 20 day moving average with price action on the hourly RSI shipping a push up after hitting the oversold level in today's Asia session. So with that, uh, we will flip to an intraday bullish bias on the Euro Aussie, a particular FX cross pair to look out for ahead of today's uh, ECB. So uh, as long as this 161.80 short term pivotal support holds on Euro Aussie, uh, potentially uh, it, the technical configuration right now supports a intraday bullish bias. First resistance level to watch on the near term will be top of this range, this minor range resistance that is in place since 8th of October this year at 163.40. Only a breakout above 163.40 potentially expose the next near term resistance level at 1.6430, which confluence with the 200 day moving average and as well as this uh, descending trend line resistance that is in place since 15th of August. Right, that preventing uh, further price action from breaking out since 15th of August. Previously, uh, it kept 9th of September and 12th of September. So, however, if price action starts to shape a bearish breakdown with an hourly close below 161.80, that would invalidate today's intraday bullish bias on the Euro Aussie to see it uh, shape a further uh, potential slide to expose the next near term support level at 161 figure, followed by 160 figure next. Okay, so that's uh, one of one particular cross pair to take a look at Euro Aussie. Now with that, let us now turn our attention to the major stock indices, starting with the Hong Kong 33. So the Hong Kong 33 uh, continues to uh, shape this kind of pretty much churning uh, scenario again. So uh, price action still refuse to break out above the 20,850 level and now starts to shape a potential uh, pullback again, a pullback line again. So with, with that over here, uh, the short, the medium term pivotal support still holds at 1979 slash 19,455 over here. So potentially there could be a retest around this area again, unless this level break down, then potentially we'll see the extension of this minor corrective decline scenario that is in place since uh, 8th of October. So key levels to watch out for for today on the intraday basis. 19,790 slash 455. So that is our medium term pivotal support level at this juncture. So we will still maintain that intraday bullish bias, but conviction has been pretty much low as well for today. Why? Because of today's Asia session, the rejection at the first resistance level at 20,850. Unless price action got to break out above 20,850, then if we have hourly close above it, then this intraday bullish bias uh, odds will increase at least to actually seek out the next near term resistance level at 21,550. Right. If price action starts to come down and break below 19,445, which is the lower limit of, of our medium term pivotal support zone, then uh, the intraday bullish bias will be invalidated to kickstart the extension of this corrective decline scenario that is still in place since uh, 8th of October to expose the next support level at 18,230, which confluence with the 50 day closely with the 50 day moving average, I think, I think as a similar support level as well at 18,230, right? So that's the uh, intraday technical levels, key levels to look out for and the bias as well. So uh, yes, still maintain that bullish bias, but conviction has been low because of the failure to break out above 20,850. So price action got to very quickly have an hourly close above 20,850 to increase the intraday bullish bias. So that's for the Hong Kong 33. 
Now, turning our attention will be the Nikkei 225 or the Japan 225. Still recall Japan 225 yesterday, we do have an intraday bearish bias. The intraday bearish bias hit our first support level, uh, 28,740, which is also the rising 20-day moving average, and as well as the minor ascending trend line from the low of 30th of September. 30th of September. All right, and now the hourly RSI has starts to also shape that so-called uh, bullish divergence as well. There's a higher low on the hourly RSI, but I do not want to put it so tight at 38,740. That is my first support level to watch. I'll use a slightly lower level for today, 38,360, just in case of any whipsaw. We, that level also confluence with much more technical element, the 200-day moving average, which is a key long-term moving average, and as well as the minor swing low of 3rd of October that confluence with the medium term ascending trend line that I drew from the low of 7th of 5th of September. All right. So as long as 38,360 level, this level here is not surpassed to the downside, we will flip back to flip back to an intraday bullish bias within this complex range scenario that the Nikkei 225 is playing out on an intraday basis. First near-term resistance level to watch, 39,580. Above it exposes 40,155 slash 40,280. Unless we see a price action that's break down below 38,360 level, that means a price break below this level, potentially will expose the uh, next support level at 37,815 level, which correspond to the rising 50-day moving average as well. All right, so that's the intraday technical outlook right now for the Japan 225 and the key levels to watch. Now, turning our attention will be the European stock index, which is the German 30. The German 30 continues to trade a sideway after hitting the first support level that we highlighted yesterday. So technical level remains unchanged so far. Uh, the hourly RSI starts to print out a higher low Okay, higher low over here. So still no change to using the 19,320 as our short-term pivotal support level that, to maintain this intraday bullish bias. So uh, first support level to watch out for for today. So I'll put it this level here. That is very close to yesterday's uh, high. 19,540, a breakout above 19,540 potentially sees 19,690 slash 19,755. So these are the two intraday resistance level to look out for. However, if price action starts to break down below 19,320, then this intraday bullish bias will invalidated to see the continuation of this minor corrective decline scenario unfolding uh, from the high of uh, 15th of October to expose the next near-term support level at 19,130. A breakdown below it sees the minor swing low of 8th of October at 18,960, which pretty much confluencing very quickly to this rising 50-day moving average as well. Okay, so that's for the German 30. Now, turning our attention will be the major US stock indices, starting with the US Wall Street 30. So indeed, this is a key support level that we highlighted earlier on on the US Wall Street 30, 42,630 hit on last Tuesday sell-off and staged that V-shaped rebound and price action uh, stall right exactly at the 41, 43,170 level that we highlighted as well. So uh, if this level didn't surpass on the upside, we do not want to tighten the short-term pivotal support level, still remains unchanged, 42,630. Above 43,170 exposes 43,545, 540, pardon me, 43,540 in the first step, which correspond to the 0.618 FIBO extension taken from the low of 11th of September, and as well as the upper limit of this medium term ascending channel that I drew from the low of 5th of August this year. Okay, so these are the key levels to watch out for. However, if price action starts to break down below 42.630, then it will invalidate today's intraday bullish bias on the US Wall Street 30 to kickstart another round of minor corrective decline scenario to expose the next support level at 42,180 slash 41,950. We also correspond to the minor swing low area of 8th of October. Okay, so that's the technical outlook on the US Wall Street 30. Now, turning our attention will be the luck luster NASDAQ 100. So still no change, the NASDAQ 100 managed to stage a bounce, but the bounce is not so strong as compared to the Dow Jones Industrial Average because of that Trump play that is playing out and also the potential uh, boost deepening of the US Treasury yield curve that's supporting the outperformance of Dow Jones against the NASDAQ 100. But given the fact that the NASDAQ 100 continues to hold above this support level at 20,155 slash 
20,000 uh, level, which is so the rising 20 day moving average. Yes, we still keep a bullish bias on the NASDAQ 100, but momentum may not be so fantastic as, com as compared to the, to the Dow Jones Industrial Average. First resistance level to watch out for on the NASDAQ 100 will be 20,410 level. Above 20,410 exposes 20,615, which is the minor swing high of 15th of July this year. However, if price action on the NASDAQ 100 starts to break down below 20,000, which is also the 20-day moving average, then it potentially will kickstart another round of minor corrective decline sequence, at least in the first step, to expose the next support zone at 19,750 slash 19,630, which correspond to the rising 20-day 50-day moving average, and as well as this uh, medium-term ascending channel that I drew from the low of 5th of August. Okay, so that sum up the intraday technical outlook on the major stock indices. So with that, now let us turn our focus now towards the major towards the two commodities market that we cover, starting with gold XAU slash USD. So gold XAU slash USD continues to push up as expected and hit uh, this uh, mine all-time high area at 2064, 2.074. 674, pardon me, 2,684, now shipping a, uh, a pullback from this level over here at this juncture. So uh, with that, uh, we will actually uh, have a, okay, one second now, we will have a Titan key short-term pivotal support for today, this congestion area here, and also if I were to do a minor trend line linking from the current low of 10th of October, Okay, it also corresponds to this minor ascending trend line as well. So 2660 will be my Titan key short term pivotal support level for today. Still maintain that intraday bullish bias on gold XAU slash USD. The next resistance level to watch will be 2709 slash uh, 2719, which is a FIBO uh, extension level as well. And if you were to do the latest FIBO extension level taken from the current low of uh, 10 of October, push it up to here. And project it down to the recent swing line. It also correspond to the 1.236 level as well, this zone here. So this level will be the next level to watch out for after 2684, which is the current all-time high. However, if price action starts to come down with an hourly close below 2660, then that would negate today's intraday bullish buyers to shape a minor corrective decline to revisit the 20-day moving average coming close to the resistance that a uh, support level at 2637. It's a zone over here. Okay, 2645 slash 2637 next. Okay, so that's for the go XAU slash USD. Now, turning our attention, lastly, will be the West Texas uh, crude oil over here. So give me the West, West Texas crude oil. Yeah, West Texas crude oil. So West Texas crude oil continues to actually uh, shape a bounce, a kind of a, a, a two tests at the 70.10 level. So with that, uh, the RSI also continues to shape a series of higher low over here. So I will actually uh, be more uh, uh, kind of a uh, aggressive, tighten the short-term pivotal support level, 70.10. So as long as 70.10 holds, potentially it could start to shape a kind of a minor bounce scenario, still maintain the intraday bullish bias, but we in a range configuration, First resistance level to watch will be 73.15. Only a breakout above 73.15 potentially exposes 75.30. So 73.15 is pretty key. Why? Because it confluence with the 50-day and the 20-day moving average as well, as well as this graphically congestion area here. But however, if price action starts to break down below 70.10 with an hourly close below it, then this corrective decline sequence will continue to expose 68.70. So what 68.70 is in fact the minor ascending trend line from the low of 11 of September. A breakdown below 68.70 exposes the uh, swing low area of 1st of October at 67.55 slash 67.10 level. And this 67.55 and 67.10 level is very key level. Why? Because that is our medium term pivotal range support level. Okay, so this 7.55 slash 65.70, this zone here is a medium term pivotal support, medium term pivotal range support zone that is in place since uh, 16th of March last year. Okay, so something to look out for when price action hit this level. All right, so for now, still using 70.10 as my short term pivotal support level, maintain that intraday bullish bias, but first resistance level to watch. Out for is only 73.15 for now, unless you can have a clear breakout above 73.15, then potentially it may expose 75.30 next. So that's uh, the intraday technical outlook for West Texas oil and the key uh, 
as well as the intraday technical outlook for the major broad-based cross-asset classes. So before we go, let us now take a look at the calendar, what are the key things to look out for. So uh, in terms of other than ECB, that is going to be out later today. So uh, during the uh, uh, European session, it will be rather quiet. So the key data will come up for is at 8.15 p.m. Singapore time, ECB decision. So after ECB decision, uh, we do have the ECB press conference at 8. Okay, give me a minute now, just convert. Yeah, 8.15 Singapore time. Then 30 minutes later, we have the ECB press conference at 8.45 p.m. Singapore time. And during the US session, there's another key data to look out for over here. Okay, give me a minute. Where is it? Yeah, so basically for yeah retail sales. Okay, retail sales, which is important. Huh? So retail sales will be out at 8.30 p.m. Singapore time. US retail sales will be very important data to look out for as well, because that could actually impact the uh, US Federal Reserve uh, Fed funds rate pricing going forward. So if we start to see a very weak US retail sales data, perhaps uh, next year, there will, could be a chance of a 50 basis point cut that's being uh, priced into the market. So far, market is only looking at 25, a series of 25 basis point cuts. Then thereafter, we do have a uh, Federal Reserve official speaking at 11 p.m. Singapore time, Fed Goosby speech. Right, and also uh, one data that is pertaining, especially surrounding the Nasdaq 100, which is uh, pertaining to the, the the AI optimism team play that is in place since two years ago, will be earnings up from this uh, TSMC. All right, so there's this TSMC data. Yeah, TSMC uh, data. TSMC uh, should be. A during the close of today's Asia session, uh, Taiwan Semiconductor is a very important component of the semiconductor play, and that could have a, 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 a feedback loop impact on the NASDAQ 100, and as well as Netflix as well will report its earnings uh, today as well. So these are the two earnings to take note of that could impact on the US stock market, TSMC, Netflix, especially pertaining to have a much more impactful impact on the NASDAQ 100. All right, so with that, that sum up today's uh, Daily Dose of Market Insights. I'm Kelvin here, signing off, and I wish you all a great day ahead, and we shall speak again tomorrow. Thank you.